Okay, start or try and join now. There we go. Okay. That worked. We weren't able to like um have Mary wasn't able to turn on her camera and I wasn't able to change that setting for her. So Ooh. but Good. I found it in the settings, but we had to restart the meeting to get it to apply. Okay. Well, my camera's working. Good. <laughs> Does she know to come back? Okay. Yeah. She said she was going to give it a couple of minutes. Okay. Did Cassie show up too, or do we need to tell her anything? She hasn't shown up yet. There we go. You're muted. Okay. <laughs> now I have sound and visual. Very nice. Our attendee hasn't shown back up, though. <laughs> okay. And is the applicant here? Not yet. Okay. Cassie, can you turn on your camera and unmute yourself? I cannot hear you guys yet. Can you hear me now? Hold on. Uh, I'll message her. She has to allow her audio. Okay. I can hear you guys. Can you hear me? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Great. So we should wait maybe... What's well, the name of your applicant? Caleb. I'm sorry, say that again. Caleb Corbridge. Okay. We have one attendee. Brian, are you here to speak on this item or just? Um, I am. Okay. And, but you're not an applicant or a representative of the applicant? I am a representative of the property owner. You are. Do you have and a Caleb is our general contractor? Okay. Will you be giving a presentation? I am I, I don't have anything by way to present on uh, by way of screen, but more of just kind of verbal dialogue with the, the group. Okay. So I will So Brian, are you representing the applicant uh the applicant was supposed to be in attendance uh i was going to give support as needed i will text the um keel of the applicant but he's sort he's working on my behalf he's contracted to me for a general contractor okay 
I'm going to move you over into the panelist list. Oh, okay. And Brian, did you get the invite from Caleb? Just so I know that he has all the correct information. Maybe. I just spoke with Caleb on the phone. He's dialing in now. Okay. Is it helpful for the group if I share the staff report? I'm sure you all have that in front of you as well. Whatever's best for you. Um, Brian, I'm. my name's Mary Woodhead. I'm the hearing officer today and I'll conduct the meeting and I have reviewed all of the materials including the plant the staff report. Great that makes it easy. Awesome. Maybe while we're waiting, Brian, you can um, provide your full name and oh, sure. your business name just for the record so we have that. Sure. Brian, that's B-R with an I, and then Waylon, W-H-A-L-E-N. And you own the property as well as the business at the property? Not not as an individual, I'm an employee of the owner. Okay. Uh, 
I have just moved Caleb into the panelist list. He should be showing up shortly. Hi, Caleb, you should be able to unmute yourself and if you could please turn on your camera. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. Okay, are we ready? We're ready. Okay, I am calling to order the Salt Lake City Planning Division Appeals Hearing Meeting for Thursday, April 27th, 2023. We have one item on the agenda, a variance request, um, case number PLNZA D2023-00132, a request to allow a six foot fence in the front yard of a multifamily development at approximately 714 and 760 North 9th West. I understand the applicant is represented by Caleb Corbridge. Correct. Um, before we proceed, um, my name is Mary Woodhead. I've reviewed the full staff report and all of the materials. So you're welcome to make whatever argument you would like to make, but be aware that I've reviewed those things. We'll proceed by um, having the staff, I think Cassie, give a opening discussion of the um, application and then have the applicant, Caleb, describe the nature of your request and any other information you'd like me to have. Then I'll open up the um, meeting for public comment and other input. And then I will bring it back to you, Caleb, for any closing remarks. Does, okay. does that make sense to everyone? It okay. Does, yeah. Okay. Any other questions? No. Nope. Okay. Cassie, do you want to go ahead and get us started? Sure. Let me share my screen here and my PowerPoint. I'm not quite as used to Zoom, so all right. Do you see a PowerPoint? Yes. Yes. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. So just as a brief um, um oh, Cassie, yeah. you might want to put slideshow option because it's showing two slides just for clarity. Um, does it have that? Which show taskbar display settings? It's it's okay then. I thought okay. that was an easy option. <laughs> for those of you who haven't been here before, Salt Lake City has used WebEx for its hearings. I think since the beginning of Zoom, or since the beginning of the pandemic. So Zoom is is a little bit of a change for these hearings. We'll figure it out. <laughs> Um, actually, I have it on my other, I'm not sure how that happened, but it's presenting on my other screen, so that's why it's double-sided here. Um, but we'll just proceed. Uh, yeah. The property, uh, the subject property's location is 714 and 760 North 900 West here in the orange block. Yeah. It's in a multifamily RMF 35 zone, um, and it's the downtown West apartment complex located in Rose Park and the subsequent master plan. Um, the applicant is proposing a six foot tall front um, fence in the front yard. So along 900 West here marked in orange. Um, they currently have a six foot fence along the side corner yard here um, that somewhat encroaches into the front yard as well. Um, and they would just like to maintain that consistency along the front yard uh, and also have this fence for security reasons, uh, which they've provided uh, proof of in the staff report. The code requirements for fences in the front yard, uh, they cannot exceed four feet in the front yard, um, but may go up to six feet in the corner side and rear yards beyond the primary facade of the prin principal structure. Um, so as you can see in like the aerial here, they have quite a few different buildings, carports, dry valves here. So they would be allowed to have um, a six foot fence along this front yard of a primary building, um, but not 
in that front yard area. Okay. Um, so another argument that the applicant has made is that it would match existing six foot tall fences um, nearby the property. And that is correct that there is a six foot tall um, fence directly adjacent on the property to the north in the front yard that, as you can see, directly abuts the sidewalk. Um, we require building permits for fences now for the past like 20 or so years. Um, and we do not have a building permit record for this six foot tall fence that the neighbor has. Um, there also used to be something called the special exception process where um, an applicant was able to possibly get a six foot tall fence in that area if, when going through that process. Uh, so we also have no record of that happening to this property. So from staff's standpoint, that this isn't a legally constructed fence on the neighboring property. Um, so obviously that we can't build something that matches like an illegal structure. Uh, so going through the variant standards, the request has to meet all of the standards in order to be granted a variance. And these are some general standards for zoning in the general plan. Um, there have to be circumstances peculiar to the property itself that the property is unique to those in this zone and those surrounding it, um, why it needs this special variance. Um, the hardship itself cannot be self-imposed or economic, which in this case it, it isn't. Um, there might be a slight economic um, aspect to it, but that's not really what the uh, applicant is arguing. Um, and the special circumstances related to the property have to be directly related to that hardship. So, and as I covered in more detail in the staff report, there are really no special circumstances attached to this property that don't apply to all of the other properties in the surrounding area and the zoning district. There are no defining physical characteristics of this property in terms of size, shape, or topography that would um, cause this hardship, um, that where a six foot fence would be re required to alleviate this hardship. And so, um, and the hardship does not come from any particular circumstances related to the property, um, but is more of just from the general conditions of the neighborhood, which the standards explicitly say um, cannot be granted a variance for those things. So um, based on these reasons, the staff is recommending a denial based on the fact that it just doesn't meet those standards for a variance. Okay, thank you. Caleb, do you wanna go ahead with your um, presentation remarks? Uh, yeah, um, I just know one of the main reasons uh, for the six foot perimeter fence is due to the crime. Um, I obviously provided that in the variance um, submittal report. Um, I think it led as number second within that area of the number of calls that 911 received. Um, and so the idea is to obviously um, alleviate the number of calls uh, that Salt Lake City Police is receiving um, by adding a little bit more security to the property. Um, you know, we had in writing the blessing of the, uh, you know, building code um, specialist or director saying that he didn't have an issue with it. It was mainly zoning. Um, you know, we provided proper setbacks to the fence, things along those lines. Um, and so that's really kind of you know, our, our concern is just the, the crime um, and, you know, doing what we possibly can for not only the residents of downtown West, but the residents of that area and just providing a little bit more security um, so we can at least drop the number of calls that are being dialed to 911. Okay, just to clarify what you described as the blessing of the building officials is just them stating that they don't have any problem with the application within the scope of their authority, which is not 
a blessing for the project. It no, just that, is there. I I think yes. we just need to make sure the record is clear in that regard. Yeah, you're right. Yes. Okay. Not the it, for the entirety of the project, but yes, for their particular department, there was no I, issue. And you've read the staff report and you've seen that it the application doesn't technically meet most of the statutory requirements for a variance. I do, yes. And that was obviously portrayed during uh, Cassie's presentation. Okay. Yeah, I, I just wanted to chime okay, in. Okay, well. let's stop, Brian. Hold oh, on sorry. a minute. I'll right. recognize you in a minute. Okay, sorry. Um, so, Caleb, are, is that your... Yeah, you know, okay. I mean, you know, as the, the GC, I really don't know the history of the property. That's obviously something Brian would know more of. Um, okay. You know, it was just, um, you know, knowing that we are the ones who go about this um, and trying to do it the right way, obviously wants to step in in behalf of the client to obviously award them on what they, you know, had contracted us to do. Um, so that's obviously right. why we're here. Um, and so, you know, the concern that we obviously saw just talking with the client was mainly the the crime, but I'm sure Brian would like to add some more insight to, you know, those types of things, knowing that he um, knows a little bit more about the asset or, you know, the property um, than we as the general contractor do. Okay, I appreciate that appreciate that. Brian, I'm going to recognize you as another representative of the applicant. Do you want to go ahead? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, do you want to turn on your camera? Are you able uh, to do that? One sec here. Let me try out. I'm not sure if it's properly situated here. Let me see if this gives us a go. Hi. <laughs> All right. So, uh, my name is Brian Whalen. I am a representative of the company that owns uh, the property, Downtown West. Uh, the Just wanted to just sort of, um, our, our appeal really is mostly based off safety for our residents, our employees, uh, the, the public, and then those responders that, that come to the property. Uh, that's really the what buttresses a lot of this. There are other considerations like cost, but this property, when you look at the crime stats, is the highest call for police service in town. We're trying to be, we are new owners of the property. Uh, we've owned it less than one year, and we are trying to do our part to help in, serve the community and residents uh, of which we you know, are members of. And while there are, I understand that there are strict standards for a variance, our research at the property uh, through acquisition has seen that there have been shootings at the property every year, uh, going back several years. There has been significant amount of crime coming from outside the property coming into the property along 700 west there are several parked cars and rvs whom are dealing drugs out of them and they come onto our property and damage our property and break into it there is a significant amount of homeless in, uh, along 700 north uh, wrapping up towards the rose park neighborhood center <laughs> during the cold nights uh Gosh, I feel for them. They come in though and they break our doors and they seek warm shelter in our hallways and in our laundry rooms. Uh, we are we are impacted financially um, from that. And our residents have to deal with quite a bit of crime coming onto their home where they're trying to enjoy life, um, such that we're trying to secure an area for some 800 people that live here. There's 418 apartment homes, uh, a mix of one bedrooms and two bedrooms. So it's really just a, I understand that the code is predominantly based off of uh, a single family home code that is then extrapolated to higher densities. Um, the and I, and I do understand what the zoning ordinance is trying to do with how it's trying to create its makeup for the community. We're just trying to solve a problem that exists for uh, 
residents and of the community uh, that, that's around it. So while we certainly understand the strict standards that are, are, that do exist, do you know that we are we are trying to do this the right way. If you drive around Rose Park, there are so many six foot fences all over. And no one's come to this committee asking for approval, but we're we're trying to do it the right way. Um, so it's kind of like, <laughs> you know, it's I, like I there's a whole bunch of people that get their way, but they didn't they didn't try to do it the right way. And so we're we're asking as the most problematic property in town, can you help us out so we can secure and become okay. not the most called for service property. It, it's all, it, it, there's, I understand the logic in the and the standards that you held to, but we're just sort of, that's our argument. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Um, Aubrey, is there anyone else who's come to the meeting who wants to make any kind of comment? We do not have any attendees. Okay. Um, Cassie, do you have anything else you'd like to add? I do not. Okay, Caleb. Um, no, I do not. No. Okay, I think sometimes when people hear the word variance, they think it means that the hearing officer, in this case me, gets to simply vary what the ordinance says. But my basic remit under the law is to enforce the ordinance and to see that the elements of the ordinance is met. Whether I would like it or anyone else would like it, I'm not a policymaker and I don't have any policy authority or the authority to vary what the city council has passed as the written ordinance. And I understand your reasoning for wanting the fence, but it's not within my authority to um, go outside the elements of the ordinance. So I'm gonna go ahead and deny the request. I will... Um, reduce my decision into writing in the next week or so. Um, there is an opportunity, I think, for you to further explore other options. But um, my, my decision tonight is to deny the request for a variance. And it's not because I don't understand the issues you're raising. It's simply outside my authority, given that the request fails to meet most of the elements of the ordinance that's been adopted by the city. Thank you. Does anyone have anything else? If not, I'll go ahead and close the meeting. Thank you. That's it. Thank you very much, Mary. Okay, thank you. I Good appreciate night. your time. Yep, yeah, thank you. Good night.